Well, hi there. So in this video, I would suggest actually taking a look at Jacob Clifford's video about price discrimination and monopolies. Um, they're just price discrimination first. I think they're really helpful. This is kind of a repeat of it. If you wanted to just do it without watching his video, that's fine. Um, what we're going to do is kind of compare what would be the difference between a single price monopolist. So we'll just say single, single price and a price discriminating monopolist. And again, what I've shown you here is really the only difference is that the marginal revenue curve becomes part of the demand curve for a price discriminating monopoly. And we have a few questions. The first is what's their profit maximizing quantity? And that's always gonna occur where MR equals MC. So let's go put that here, MR equals MC. And then we can find it on this curve, marginal revenue, marginal cost. So we would say here, right there is number one. And number for the other firm, marginal revenue, marginal cost is here number one. So they're producing at a larger quantity if we let them price discriminate. Profit, shade the area. So if they're producing at Q1, then we know that the distance from the ATC at that quantity all the way up to the price on the demand curve is actually our profit. So I'm going to kind of connect those, shade them together, link them together, right here. And we would say this area here is profit. Now on this firm, it's a little bit different. If they're producing here, the ATC value here up to the price they're charging, and then because they're charging actually every single customer, every single different price in this whole range, then actually the profit goes all the way up the demand curve as well. It's going to come down and actually bottom out at the very bottom right here where that ATC line is. So it's a trapezoid actually, it's way bigger amount of profit, way, way bigger amount of profit. Um, so you can see why a price discriminator would really, really be happy about the ability to do it. They capture so much extra profit. Um, and again, that's because the actual prices that are getting charged are in this range, right? So the firm's prices are not just one price, price firm, it's a whole range of prices that the firm is charging because they're charging every single consumer different prices. And what we actually find is what's the average cost of all the units at Q2, right? The average cost is here. And I say, well, we charge this person this much, subtract the average cost, that's how much profit from that unit. We charge this person this much, subtract that average cost of the unit. So we make an enormous amount of profit if we're able to actually perfectly price discriminate. So we've done shading the area on both of those. Consumer surplus, shade the area. Now on this one, we know the consumer surplus goes from the price that the consumers are paying up to the demand curve, right? Because it's the difference between what they were willing to pay and what they did pay. Now, in this market, they are paying exactly what they're willing to pay. So consumer surplus does not exist. It doesn't exist. There is none. That's why the consumers feel like they're getting screwed. And there are actual markets where this happens. The airline industry is really good at price discriminating. You have other kinds of things like restaurants that will price discriminate in a little bit more simple ways. They'll say, well, middle-aged people, you're going to pay a high price elderly people and students, you're going to get a quote discount. You're going to pay a lower price. What they're doing is just trying to assess your willingness and ability to pay, charging some people higher prices and other people lower prices, which is what this firm is doing. They're charging some people lower prices, right? Some people charging higher prices. Airlines do it all the time. Like I said, they have lots of ways of trying to determine whether you're willing and able to pay a higher price, an easy one. They ask you every time when you book a flight, are you traveling for business or pleasure? Well, they know if you're traveling for business, you're probably going to pass that cost on to your company. And so you're actually willing and able to pay a higher price. And so sometimes if you, if you set up kind of a virtual private network, you kind of be able to do this where you have the same exact flight, the same seat. If you tell them, yes, leisure, they'll show you lower prices for that exact flight than yes, business, they'll show you higher prices. There's tons of others that are out there. Again, we can talk about those at another time. Um, by the way, the last and most um, most kind of icky of them is probably one that you're getting pretty close to being familiar with. It's the college market. They are really good at price discriminating, right? They try to determine exactly what you're willing and able to pay and then charge you what that is. Now, we've done consumer surplus for both profit maximizing price. We actually did that already, PF here, and then we have a range of prices here. And then deadweight loss. Well, we know deadweight loss is here from the quantity that we're producing, right? We've done that in a previous video. Up the marginal cost curve and down along that demand curve because it's the lost value of transactions that are not happening because this market is inefficient. But in this market, right, we know that, so this is the optimal point. 
That's where price equals marginal cost. That's how I can determine deadweight loss. This is still the optimal point. And so, in fact, we are producing the socially optimal quantity, and that would be why deadweight loss does not exist. So this is what we would call an allocatively efficient market. It's just that the consumers feel like they're really getting screwed over. Um, and, they, and they probably kind of are in their eyes. They're saying, I'm paying these extraordinarily high prices. A competitive market, if it was a perfectly competitive market, would actually charge everybody this low price at the very bottom end of the scale. So literally everybody in this market, with the exception of people at the very bottom, are paying higher prices than they would in a competitive market. And they're not getting any consumer surplus. So although we would say there's no deadweight loss, um, it's still not always maybe an optimal solution for a lot of actual human beings. Now, the last part is going to be drawing a price discriminating monopoly. And it's really just seeing, like, can you replicate this picture from up here? Can you replicate it without kind of assistance? So we're going to start with the axes, just like before. But now we have a demand curve that's actually equal to the marginal revenue curve. And so we don't have a separate one. We're just going to have a marginal cost curve that comes down and up. And if we're saying that they're earning a profit, then we'll have to kind of come down, hit here, and come over. And again, I'm actually just replicating the picture from up here. And I know that they're going to produce where MR equals MC. So the quantity the firm produces is here, right? I go down to the ATC and then over. And I want to make sure I'm kind of cutting over the top of that, that, that little portion there. And then up. And all of this area is actually our profit. And again, I'm just redrawing that picture from above, just trying to make it a little bit cleaner right there there. And so this area here is all of our profit. And then label the range of prices that the monopolist would charge. Well, they're charging all the way from here to down. Oops, not quite there. So the, the tricky part is actually knowing that they don't quite price here because that's the ATC. The bottom of their price range is here, where actually the, the quantity that the firm produces connects in with the demand curve. So the range of prices is PF from here to here, the ATC is that lower value. That's what actually that one corresponds to. So this, again, that ATC value, that's not one of the prices that actually they're going to charge. Um, so again, these, this picture here should look pretty much the same as this picture up here. Hopefully this practice with price discrimination helped you understand a little bit more about efficiency. I'll see you next time.